You've probably tried it before. You picture something in your mind, something you'd love to experience, and for a moment, it feels exciting, maybe even possible. But then that little voice creeps in. How is this going to change anything? How is something I'm imagining in my own mind supposed to change what actually happens in my life? It's a fair question, because visualization when you don't understand how it truly works, can sound like wishful thinking, like some mysterious process you're supposed to trust without knowing why. And that's exactly why so many people struggle to fully believe in it or give up when they don't see instant results. But here's the part most people never get taught. There's real science behind why mental imagery affects your behavior, your habits, even your outcomes. It's called neuroplasticity, your brain's ability to rewire itself based on what you mentally rehearse, focus on, and repeat. In this video, I'm going to explain the neuroscience behind how visualization works. We'll look at the brain science behind it, real-world studies, and one simple method you can start using today to change the way you think, act, and show up from the inside out. Hello, my beautiful superheroes. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Scarlett Grace and I help people bring their impossible dreams to life by combining timeless mind techniques and psychology with the latest discoveries in neuroscience. This channel is all about shifting your identity and becoming the version of you who has it all. So subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you want my personal help to get your desires, the waitlist to one-on-one coaching is now open. So sign up and you'll be the first to know when spaces open up again. And if you need help with your love life, check out my 21-day course. You will find the links for everything in the description below. So, have you noticed how some people decide to change something in their life and it actually happens? They start thinking differently, showing up with more clarity, making moves that work, and somehow things around them start lining up to you. And you find yourself wondering, what are they doing that I'm not? Do they know something I don't? Because it's not like you haven't tried, right? You've put in the effort, you've done the work. But then reality pulls you right back. You go back to the same patterns, the same reactions, the same results. So what is really going on? The truth is, People who change more easily, who grow into new habits or mindsets and actually stay there, they're not mentally stronger or unusually lucky. They're using something that's happening at the brain level, whether they know it or not. They have rehearsed those new responses. They have become familiar with a version of them who makes different choices. And their brain has started to adapt to build new pathways that make those choices easier and easier to access. And that is what we're going to explore today. How visualization creates real, measurable changes in the brain and how to use that process to finally stop going back to the old version of you and start responding as the person you actually want to be. Now, let's get into how visualization actually works and why it is not just a feel-good trick, but a real, measurable tool for change. Imagine your brain like a big open field full of tall grass. Every time you think a certain thought, react in a certain way, or make the same choice, it's like walking through that grass in the same direction. The first time you do it, it feels slow. The grass is high and it takes effort to push through. But the more you repeat it, whether it is a thought, a reaction, a belief, a memory you keep going back to, a habit, the more that path gets worn down. Eventually, there is a clear trail through the grass. It's easier to walk. You don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just where your mind automatically goes because it's the easy, familiar, clear path. The thoughts you keep thinking the habits you repeat, even the way you see yourself, all of those things aren't so persistent because they're true. They are so persistent because they are so familiar. 
you have walked down those paths in your mind so many times that your brain literally created a shortcut to make it even easier to go down those paths without needing to pay extra attention or use up a lot of energy. But here's the good news. You're not stuck with the same old paths. Your brain can create new paths at any time you want. And that's where visualization comes in. Visualization is like walking a new path in your mind and your brain doesn't really care whether the path is real or imagined. That is the magic of neuroplasticity. Your brain's ability to form new neural connections, new shortcuts and rewire old ones based on what you repeatedly focus on. When you vividly imagine something, a version of you thinking differently, responding differently, living differently, your brain doesn't treat it as just imagination. It starts to respond as if the experience is actually real. That kind of mental rehearsal can lead to physical changes in the brain that support real-world changes. That is why athletes have used it for decades to improve their technique. So have musicians learning new pieces, surgeons preparing for procedures, and even public speakers rehearsing delivery. Not by repeating it out loud, but by running through it clearly in their mind. And the research backed this up. In one of the most often cited studies from back in the 60s, psychologist Dr. Alan Richardson divided basketball players into three groups. The first group practiced free throws every day for 20 days. A second group did absolutely nothing at all. And the third group didn't touch a basketball, but they visualized making successful shots clearly and repeatedly every day for 20 days. The results? The group that did nothing showed no significant improvement. The group who physically practiced improved by about 24%. But the group who only visualized improved by almost the same amount, around 23%, without ever taking a shot. And if you want something more recent, researchers at Harvard University showed similar results with piano players. One group physically practiced a series of finger exercises. The second group just imagined doing it, and both groups showed changes in the motor region of the brain, even the one that only used mental rehearsal and no physical practicing. So we've talked about how mental rehearsal can physically change the brain, but what's actually going on when you imagine something clearly and repeatedly? Here's what the research shows. When you picture yourself doing something, whether it's making a decision, having a conversation, achieving a goal, your brain lights up in many of the same areas it would if you were actually doing it. That includes your motor cortex, your sensory regions, and the areas responsible for planning, emotion, and focus. In other words, your brain doesn't always distinguish between something that is happening and something that you're just vividly imagining. To your brain, practice is practice. And one of the big reasons for this is something called mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are the parts of your brain that fire, not just when you do something, but also when you see someone else doing it, or when you imagine yourself doing it. They help us learn by imitation. They help us feel empathy. And they're also a big part of why visualization works, because when you mentally rehearse something, Mirror neurons can help create a sense of familiarity with the behavior, even if you haven't done it yet in your life. This is why visualization can feel so real. Why you can get very emotional just imagining a conversation, or nervous thinking about something that hasn't even happened yet. The brain is already participating in the experience. That is not symbolic. It is not theoretical. It is what your brain actually physically does. And the more often you rehearse a specific situation, a specific version of you, a specific outcome, the easier it becomes for your brain to accept it, support it, and follow through with the thoughts and behaviors that align with it. You're walking that new mental path again and again and again. And just like we talked about earlier, the more you walk it, the clearer it gets. What once felt unfamiliar or out of reach becomes easier, smoother, and eventually 
automatic, because now your brain knows the why. It has built a shortcut. So now that you know how powerful visualization can be, the next question is, how do you actually do it in a way that works? The key isn't just to casually picture something and hope it sinks in. For your brain to take it seriously, your visualization has to be specific, vivid, and repeated often. Think of it like this. You're not watching a movie in your head. You're mentally rehearsing the scene from inside your own body. That means you are seeing what you would see if this were happening right now. You are hearing what you would hear. You are feeling what it would be like, not just emotionally, but physically. For example, if you are imagining a version of you who speaks confidently in a meeting, don't just picture it from the outside like a camera angle. See the room through your own eyes. Feel your feet on the floor your shoulders relaxed, your voice steady. Notice the expression in someone's face as they listen to you. Let yourself feel proud, calm, certain, inspired, whatever emotions would come naturally to you in that moment. Emotion is especially important. When you feel something while visualizing, even a little, it tells the brain, this matters, this is important, and your brain remembers it more clearly. That emotional charge acts like a glue, helping the imagined experience stick. Now, here's why it doesn't work for many people. It is very simple. They stop too soon. They do it once or twice, and then they wonder why nothing feels different. But like we said earlier, this is about walking a new path in your brain. If it was tall grass and you only walk that route once or twice, a week from now it will look like tall grass again with no evidence that you ever tried to create a new path. You need to keep walking the same trail until a new path has definitely formed and can't easily disappear anymore. So the more you rehearse it, clearly, vividly and with feeling, the easier it becomes to access that path in your brain until it becomes automatic. You're not trying to force anything. You're not tricking yourself. It's not some weird magical force doing it. You're just training your brain to feel very familiar with a different version of you until it becomes the default version. And at that point, you don't consciously have to choose it anymore. It just happens automatically. It has become who you are. But what if there are things your mind keeps going back to? Thoughts, memories, moments that pull you away from the version of you you're trying to become? What if... No matter how many times you try to rehearse the new story, there is still an old one playing in the background, telling you you're not ready, reminding you it didn't happen last time, so why would it work now? Reminding you that you never had that kind of thing, so why would you have it now? Or how people like you don't get to have this. How you're not worthy or not good enough or not talented enough or not connected enough or whatever to have this. These aren't just random thoughts, they're mental paths too. Ones that you've walked so often that your brain has built shortcuts for them. But just like you can build new paths through visualization, you can also start to break down the ones that are keeping you stuck. Here's one way to do that. I want you to think of a specific thought, memory or emotional loop that keeps holding you back. Something you've replayed in your mind more than you want to admit. Now close your eyes and bring up that scene. But instead of being in it, tell yourself, this isn't happening right now. This is just a movie. I can just walk out of it. And then imagine taking a step back. And as you're taking this step back, imagine that you're not in this movie anymore. You're in a theater and the movie is playing on the screen in front of you. You're not inside it anymore. You literally walked out of that movie and you're sitting in the audience, safe, separate, just watching. And from that distance, you can start to change the way the movie looks and feels. Start imagining the colors dimming and becoming muted. Imagine the volume of the sound going down or getting distorted until you can't make out the words that hurt you anymore. 
Blur the edges. Imagine the screen shrinking or slowly drifting farther and farther away until it's hard to even make out the details. Or imagine the whole screen burning until there's nothing left of this movie. And then I want you to tell yourself, out loud or in your mind, this is not relevant to me anymore. What you're doing here is creating psychological distance. You're showing your brain, this isn't relevant anymore. There's no reason to keep that shortcut, no reason to keep bringing it up. And the more you do this, even with small everyday triggers, the less power these old stories have. Because you stop feeding them, you stop walking that path, you stop feeling strong emotions around them that tell your brain this is important. You make them unimportant, you make them irrelevant, and eventually your brain stops clearing that path and allows the grass to grow back. The memory is still there, but there is no shortcut anymore making it come back to mind all the time and with every opportunity. It no longer feels like you. It no longer feels relevant to you and your life. If you want to experience real change, start using this every day. Pick a new path to create or an old path to destroy, or both if you need to, and practice this every day for 21 days. And if you stay consistent, you will soon notice that you have started thinking differently, feeling differently, acting differently, making different choices. And the things around you will start aligning with what you want instead of feeling like they're secretly working against you.